Hi, uh, welcome back. There's three basic places you can you can hang out with me. One here on the Rotator Cuff Repair Expert Channel. Two, my website, mybodyprotector.com. We got some other stuff, some blog posts, you check it out. And three, my email list. And this email will come typically about once a week. If you go to dro at mybodyprotector.com and you put in yes in the subject line, we'll get you hooked up with this and that where you get to know about what's happening around our atmosphere. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about human growth hormone, anabolic steroids, and how they affect healing. I keep on getting this question over and over again in the comments, what do we know about Duravanol or other anabolic steroids or human growth hormone? What do we know about how they help and affect healing? Is that a something good that we should be doing uh, to help improve the quality of repair uh, or the healing of the rotator cuff? We have some anecdotal evidence, right? We have some evidence that we see just from day to day about this. And then we have some evidence we see in the literature. There's three papers that I looked at and to kind of get a general sense of what does the literature say about healing of tendons of rotator cuff in the light of adding human growth hormone or uh, some sort of anabolic steroids. The first paper is from Gerber in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, both back in 2012. What they did is they, they took um, a, a rat model and they cut the tendon uh, of the rotator cuff. And after they cut the tendon of the rotator cuff, they gave them exogenous anabolic steroids and see what happens uh, with the muscle. We know that when a rotator cuff tears, the part of the tendon that now no longer attached to the bone, right? So a tendon attaches muscle to the rotator cuff, tendon to the bone, right? That's what a tendon does. If you detach the tendon, we know in, in, in life, we see that muscle degenerates or atrophies over time. So if you give someone anabolic steroids after you cut the tendon, it actually helps prevent that muscle atrophy. That being said, if you give someone who has had a rotator cuff tear for a while and that atrophy happens, and then you give them steroids, it doesn't help any, okay? So we know that, I don't know what this really means in the long grand scheme of things, is if, if for some reason someone had to delay the, re, delay the repair of a rotator cuff, would there be an indication that you maybe give them steroids until that delay? Maybe, but it just seems like, well, just fix it. I mean, if that's what we're worried about, if you've got a big rotator cuff tear, fix it. Um, because the only way to know if you have a big rotator cuff tear is if you have an MRI. And once you know you have it on the MRI, then you should just fix it. If we wait until someone comes, you know, tw two months, three months, five months, a year later, and we see, oh, you got a big rotator cuff tear and you have atrophy of the tendon, so you atrophy of that muscle, you give them stuff, it doesn't make any difference, right? And so I think this is an interesting study, although probably not all that practical. The key thing is, if you know someone's got a rotator cuff tear, just fix it. So that's number one, Gerber. The next one is this guy, I'm just gonna call him Papa, because Papa has this big long name. It's a Greek name, and I'm sorry, not Greek. I'm sure one of my Greek partners could give me an idea of how to say this, but anyway, Papa, in 2010, in the Journal of Instructional Surgery, they looked at rabbits, and they created a tear in the rabbit tendon of the rotator cuff. Part of them, they gave nothing, um, they just repaired it. Part of them, <clears throat> they gave steroids and then repaired it, and they see what happens. What happens is they say the steroid is detrimental to tendon healing in rabbits. So we can kind of think that, okay, if it's rabbits, probably the same thing in humans, but that's important. So this is really interesting. And these next two are interesting in that because we know <laughs> If we have someone who's been taking chronic anabolic steroids, they're at much higher risk of tearing a tendon. So sometimes you won't well, because they're, they're big and strong, they're carrying big weights, and maybe that's why. Or maybe it's that the anabolic steroids messes up the repair mechanism. So when you have a partial tear of a tendon that maybe your body can repair normally, they're not able to repair it as well, and then, then they do the heavy load, and then they create this tendon tear. So the last one is Denaro in 2010. This is the longest journal name I've ever heard of, the Knee Surgery, Sports, Trauma, and Arthroscopy Journal. And they looked at human tenocytes. So those are the tiny tendon cells. They looked at how they would repair uh, and how that, that repair would happen. And it creates a very irregular, poor quality tendon and so that means, again, if you have a poor quality tendon trying to heal, you can make sense of it that that's not gonna work very well and that's gonna be a poor quality. So the, I think the short answer is it may preserve muscle, but it does not improve tendon healing. 
And therefore, I would be very cautious if you're out there somewhere and you tear your tendon and you have the repair, uh, I'd be very cautious of taking any anabolic steroids because you could actually worsen the situation. That's my two cents, so be careful. Hope this helps. I know most of us are not doing steroids. I know that, that a lot of us think through what else could we do to help our tendon heal in steroids, anabolic steroids, human growth hormone does not seem to be the thing. All right, thanks, and we'll talk to you soon.